Hello and welcome to our channel. This year we ticked off one of our major travel bucket list items, a road trip in the stunning Outer Hebrides. In this video we travel to the tiny Isle of Barra at the southern end of the islands. With its pristine white sandy beaches and a remote rugged landscape it was the perfect place to begin our travels. We hope you enjoy this video and if you do hit subscribe, turn on notifications and you won't miss any of our upcoming Hebridean road trip videos. To get to Barra, we boarded a ferry from Oban to Castle Bay. Calmac operate all the ferry routes between the islands and the mainland, and this was our first of many to come on this trip. A four hour journey ahead of us chasing the horizon across calm seas. Cyclonic, three or four, increasing five at times. Showers, occasionally thundery, good, occasionally moderate. Northwest Hebrides, Bailey, northeasterly four or five. Showers, good, occasionally poor and threats. Arriving in Castle Bay to the site of Castle Kissimmuel was our first taste of the beautiful Isle of Barra. stop to Castle Kissimmuel uh, which is currently closed but when it is open or when it reopens you can reach it by boat and it was the seat of the Clan McNeil I'm pretty sure and it is the only significant medieval castle to survive in the Western Isles. So we found a beautiful spot on the beach to watch the sunset, but we're wondering what's gonna win. Is it gonna be the torrential <laughs> rain that you can see behind us or the sunset that way? I think the rain might. I think maybe the rain. I think the rain might win. I think maybe the rain. Yeah. But this is beautiful. Let me show you. Gorgeous. So we came down to see the sunset, but unfortunately the sun has disappeared behind a whole load of cloud on the horizon. But we're sticking around to see if it might turn the sky in a beautiful orange glow to meet the, uh, the steely blue of the ocean. Oh, nice describing words. Thank you. Good morning from the beautiful Isle of Barra. And it is beautiful. We arrived last night and um, we didn't do very much. We got off the ferry at just before six o'clock and we checked into our accommodation as you can see behind us um, the wee tiny house and it is wee and tiny um, <laughs> but very very cozy but we are off now to explore yeah the island of Barra is only about eight miles by five miles so it's fairly small but we've got a lot to pack in including an airport with a beach for a runway so let's go and explore First 
stop on our adventures on Barra and we are searching for a deserted ancient village near Balnabadok. This is a site of archaeological interest. There are apparently some abandoned buildings and the earliest artifact found here was a barbed uh, arrowhead from 2000 BC. It's not BC, is it? Is it BC? 2000 BC. very cool to find a spot like this right on the lock side as well it must have been a tremendous place to live um, back in the day there would be fishing and obviously livestock from the hills this is a site of varying different ages right back from 2000 BC right up to um, Iron Age settlements in 200 BC to 200 AD so there's a range of it here um, we're gonna pop the drone up to see if we can get a good aerial view of it as well fascinating the more you look the more you can see the outline of buildings start to appear so there's one house uh, over here there's one here and one here and then just kind of hang on beyond this on the hill there you can see the outline of another this one has the remains of a fireplace inside it as well I'm not really an expert on fireplaces but look at the size of that mantle that must have been really heavy to put up there. Balnabadok also has a dark chapter in its past. In the 1850s, the Outer Hebrides were in the midst of a potato famine caused by a succession of failed crops. In 1851, to rid himself of the problem, the landowner of Barra, Colonel Gordon, forcibly evicted 450 people from the island in what became known as the Clearances. The cleared people were put on a ship and sent to Canada with nothing but the clothes on their backs. Well, that's an interesting little stop. Be careful where you're going, don't fall into the bog of town of stench. <laughs> yeah, you kind of got to watch your step. <laughs> <laughs> If you didn't get the Bog of Eternal Stench reference, please, please go and watch Labyrinth because it is such an amazing film. You will love it. We've made the short drive over the causeway from Barra to Vatisse to find this really sad and poignant crash site. And you can see behind me the wreckage of a Catalina plane that crashed in 1944 on the 12th of May um, in World War II, killed nine people on board. It actually crashed in the hills up behind us and I think um, the wreckage was dragged further down here. Um, so really sad to, to see this here. Unbelievable to see the mangled wreckage. It must have been absolutely devastating to crash up on the up on the hillside up there. I mean, it's slightly misty up there now, but you can imagine the absolute perils of trying to fly a plane across a landscape like this in the um, you know poor weather. to Barabados. Barabados, <laughs> you would be... I like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely feels like the Caribbean. Yeah, it does. The sand is so white and soft, you sink right in it. 
The water is crystal clear and absolutely beautiful. It's stunning, isn't it? And today's really mild. It does not feel like you're in the furthest reaches of the Outer Hebrides. Um, it's just beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Hello, you join us at Barra Airport. Nothing like Heathrow. <laughs> <laughs> I have never been plane spotting in my life, but I am very excited about what we are about to do. <laughs> we were so excited we made our lunch here. <laughs> my dad would be proud. This was the kind of holiday I used to have as a kid, picnicking uh, off the back of the car yeah. by a motorway normally. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. Barra is the world's only airport with scheduled... Um, flights that actually take off and land on the beach. So we've got a great spot overlooking the expansive sandy beach and in about half an hour we're expecting a flight from Glasgow, well the flight only goes to Glasgow, it's to and from Glasgow, 45 minute flight. In about half an hour um, the flight from Glasgow will be arriving and then it has about a 20 minute turnaround and then it'll be taking off again. So we hope we're going to see both. Um, the weather is okay at the moment. It's a little bit windy, but slight it's, breeze, it's all right. It's slight okay. breeze, I'll describe that. Um, so yeah, hopefully this should be a real sight to behold. <laughs> okay, there's a bit of excitement going on because the um, little truck has come along and he's taken down the wind socks that were at either end of the beach and the fire engine has been put away. So we think the flight might have been cancelled. Sarah's gone up to the uh, airport building to try and find out what's going on. So what's the deal? So I've just been into the tiny little airport terminal uh, to see if there's anyone to ask what had, what's happened and the customer service person wasn't there. I think she was busy making a lot of phone calls because they've got a whole group of passengers in there who, was, who were due to fly to Glasgow who are going nowhere. So. And why is this? Uh, because of the weather, I guess. They didn't seem to know, the passengers didn't seem to know why the plane had been cancelled. So I asked one of them has it been cancelled? She says, yeah. I was like, what do you do now? She said, I guess we'll be staying here until tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> what, like in the airport? <laughs> I don't know. I guess they'll need to find some other accommodation, but I mean... If they can't find it. I'd imagine that's fairly scarce. Or maybe they'll be able to get on a ferry, go to Uist and get to Glasgow from there. I'm not sure. So I'm so disappointed. Obviously, I'm disappointed for those people because they're not going to Glasgow as they planned, but I'm really disappointed for us because I was so looking forward to seeing the plane land and take off from the beach. The little geek in me is very, very sad. Got your bag? Um, yeah, I have. I picked up my bag from Baggage Reclaim, which is basically a bus shelter. Okay, so top tip, if you're coming to Barra and you want to see the plane land and take off on the beach, come whenever you can. It, whenever you can. There it, are two, twice a day. Yeah, twice a day. We didn't come this morning because we thought, well, that's fine. We'll be here for this afternoon. And who knows, if we'd have been here this morning, we might have been able to see it. Maybe. And tomorrow morning we leave before the next scheduled flight. Yeah. So we're going to miss it. So if you come... Uh, come and check out the morning one uh, and the afternoon one, you might get lucky. We did, sadly did not, so we can't show you. Sorry about that. So if you come to Barrett Airport and if like us you're disappointed, pop over the sand dunes, a very short walk across the dunes to this absolutely gobsmacking beach. In fact, 
even if you're not disappointed, come here anyway because it is beautiful. It reminds me of something out of Jurassic World or something with the mountains in the background, the surf swelling, it is just beautiful. Isn't this something else? What a beach. Out there, nothing but the North Atlantic. And actually, it's kind of like Sarah thinks of Jurassic World. I'm thinking of Point Break. Oh, I keep, yeah, point I break. keep thinking I'm going to see Keanu Reeves and Patrick Swayze come in from the from the beach. Oh wow! So this, so this vlog already has all the 80s and 90s movies referenced. It does, right? doesn't it? Labyrinth, Point Break, <laughs> Jurassic Park. Um, yeah, God, stunning. We're really taken aback actually with the beauty of the beaches around here. They're just unbelievable. And now the sun is coming out. It just makes it even more perfect. But you soon get used to it and it's so nice. It's, really, it's actually a really refreshing feeling. It is lovely. It's lovely. Well, this is what we mean about the Jurassic World looking la Here comes the sea! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wash away our footprint. Oh. Uh, yeah. Anyway, as I was saying. You can imagine like some dinosaurs that come running down the hill now, don't you? <laughs> and it probably didn't look much different in prehistoric times, I suppose. I know, I guess it didn't grow. Well, that's us ready to leave our short stay on Barra. Yeah, we're headed for South Uist now. We've actually stayed in Barra for two nights and one full day. And if, like us, you're doing an island hopping trip of the Outer Hebrides, it feels like just about the right amount of time. Yeah, we got to see everything we wanted to see and it didn't feel rushed. No, it didn't. No. And it's definitely a beautiful island, so well worth a stopover. Really beautiful, yeah. Un incredible beaches um, and beautiful. I'm hoping that we are onwards to more incredible beaches as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. So with that please do hit that uh, subscribe button if you're not already subscribed so you don't miss the rest of our Outer Hebridean adventure. Don't forget to like this video and we'll see you in the next one. On the next time. All right thanks for watching. Take care. Bye. Bye.